since everyone voted for an explanation on monarchs and gods. Today, we will be explaining everything about monarchs and gods in solo leveling in less than 10 minutes. Well, no time to waste, let's get started. In another world, there was only light and darkness. In this world, where nothing else existed yet, a being known as the Absolute Being split the light to create the emissaries of God and the darkness to create the Eight Sovereigns. Although the real reason for this was because the Absolute Being was bored being the only thing in existence. To add even more drama and entertainment to all this, the Absolute Being created the Sovereigns to destroy the world. While the emissaries were created to maintain the world. This caused both sides to fight continuously, with each side losing soldiers every time they fought. Realizing that without help the war would never end, the brightest fragment of brilliant light went to meet the creator to ask for help. He asked the creator why he had been ignoring their cries and screams while their soldiers died in battle in his honor, and pleaded with him to help him win the war. However, the absolute being kept quiet, and did not reply to the brightest fragment of brilliant light. Plea. Silence speaks louder than words. And that was when the brightest fragment of light realized that the absolute being had no intention of helping them. To him, the sovereigns and emissaries were nothing more than his own personal telenovela. And he did not wish for the war to ever come to an end furious that even though they had all pledged allegiance to the absolute being and abided by the rules, only death waited for them, the brightest fragments of brilliant light started a coup and led a rebellion against their creator. However, during this rebellion, one of the emissaries stood against them. His name was Ashborn. But he and his soldiers alone were not strong enough to stop the rebellion and were defeated in battle. Just as Ashbourne was about to die, a certain power that was hidden by the absolute being inside him emerged, allowing him to be reborn. Using this new power, he resurrected his soldiers from the dead. But when he returned, it was already too late. The war was over, and the absolute being had been killed by his own creations. Now that the remaining fragments of light had killed their father, they took on a new name as the Rulers, and used many tools containing the power of the Absolute Being to hunt down the Sovereigns and put an end to the war. With this power, the Rulers were able to capture the King of Giants, Legia, which tipped the war in their favor. Seeing this, Ashborn reached out to the Sovereigns and proposed that they join hands together to defeat the Rulers, because the war was no longer in their favor. The Sovereigns agreed, and the long-lasting war started once again. However, because of Ashbourne's new power as the Shadow Monarch, who could raise the dead as his soldiers, the longer the war went on, the stronger Ashbourne became. And as he combined forces with the Monarch of Destruction, also known as the King of Dragons, his strength grew so overwhelming that not just the rulers, but the Sovereigns, now called the Monarchs, also came to fear him. Afraid of his ever-growing power, two monarchs secretly planned to attack Ashborn. Although Ashborn was able to stop them, his army of undead was nearly destroyed in the process. One of the attacking monarchs, the King of Beasts, managed to escape before he was killed, but unfortunately the other, the Monarch of White Flames and King of Demons, was killed by Ashborn. Then, suddenly all the rulers appeared before Ashborn, kneeling and begging for forgiveness for killing the Absolute Being, because they felt there was no longer a reason for their fight to continue. However, Ashborn, still angry over their betrayal of their creator, demanded that they kill him instead of asking for peace. But they refused and continued to ask for his forgiveness. Overwhelmed by their pleas, Ashborn left and hid himself to recover and later seek revenge. While Ashborn was hiding, the monarchs lost most of their power and were defeated by the rulers, and by the time Ashborn finally came out of hiding, most of the monarchs had escaped to the cracks between the dimensions. Seeing that they all needed to recover their strength, the King of Dragons allowed Ashborn to join him, and together they went searching for a new world to rebuild their armies. This new world was called Earth. The presence of the monarchs caused the Earth to be reduced to rubble, and by the time the rulers discovered where the monarchs were hiding, it was already too late for Earth. Angry that they were not able to stop the monarchs from destroying another world, the rulers used the tool containing the power of the Absolute Being to turn back time ten years into the past. The rulers tried their best this time to save Earth, 
but the current Earth was too weak to fight against the monarchs, since it had no magical energy and could not withstand the large-scale battles happening. So, even if the rulers won the battle or the monarchs won, the result was always the same. Earth would be destroyed. This led the rulers to make a drastic decision. Seeing that they could not save everyone, the rulers decided to ensure that at least some people would survive so they could continue to repopulate the Earth. That is how the hunters were created. The rulers made certain humans capable of surviving the collision between both sides, no matter what happened. But each time the rulers used the cup of reincarnation to turn back time and reflect on their mistakes, the monarchs also used the time to adjust their plans as the cup did not affect them or their memories. This led to the cup of reincarnation being used up until it could only be used one more time. Since there was no power that was infinite, seeing that the rulers were lending humans their powers to kill magical beasts and become stronger to strengthen Earth, the monarchs also decided to borrow the bodies of humans so that they could descend on Earth, allowing them to bring their forces to destroy it before the rulers could anticipate it. Their plan was to use the magical energy spread around the Earth by the rulers to turn the entire planet into one giant trap, allowing them to destroy the rulers' armies coming to save Earth in one fell swoop. However, this plan could not work for both Ashborn and the King of Dragons because their power was too great for a human to borrow. So they could not descend on Earth like the rest of the monarchs. While trying to figure out a solution, a mage working under a monarch came to Ashborn, telling him that he had a way to allow Ashborn to find a suitable human to use to descend on Earth, and all the mage asked for in return was a body that would not perish. Ashborn agreed. But even with the mage's help, it was impossible to find a human who would become the vessel for death. However, in the midst of the search, a human surpassed the mage's system, rewriting the rules the mage had set and exceeding his expectations. Ashborn watched as Sung Jin Wu, despite being weak, always came close to death, yet never actually died time and time again. So, in spite of the mage's opposition, the Monarch of Shadows chose Sung Jin Wu as his vessel to descend on. If you would like to know what happens after Ashborn descends on Earth, check out this video.